Before we start this review, we'd like to address some recent allegations about us circulating online. We've heard murmurings that we review aircraft based on things they weren't meant to do. To that, we'd like to formally take the time to say, you're wrong. We've taken extra special care this review to choose our words carefully and to be as clear as possible. With that disclaimer, let's examine the T-28 as Horizon intended, a 3D warbird. As you've gathered, it can hover, but you'll need to do some slight mods to be able to achieve this unlike your typical extreme flight birds. We upgraded the stock prop to a 3 blade 16x8 from Master Mouse Fart Screw. Right tool for the job, this is the right tool, is... Right. <gasps> to put it plainly, the stock prop make plane go fast, but bigger prop make plane go faster. As far as hovering goes though, if you use flaps to nurse the T-28 into a hover and aren't careful with elevator inputs, it quickly turns into a bowl in a china shop situation. Holy cr- uh, No way! <laughs> the Extreme Flight Laser wins this round. And one time, we even had a sudden loss of power while hovering. Actually, twice. To be clear, we don't fault Horizon for this because we changed the prop. What happened? Something, something, something thermal cutoff. Who knows, really. But somehow, there was no damage to the airframe, despite having two pancake belly landings. We love you, Horizon. Now, you know what we do fault Horizon for? We just got finished, just about done, assembling this T-28. And I looked at this and I said, what the goddamn fuck, Horizon? This is 2023, almost 2024, and we're still doing this? This was one of the greatest complaints about previous generations, and still nothing was done to address it. Actually, they labeled the wire, so that was really nice. As far as extreme flight goes, though, in comparison, they still make you install the servos on some of their airplanes, so Horizon gets the leg up on this one. As far as a fix for this, Thunderbolt RC sells these nifty connectors which cut down on the assembly time by at least 50%. By no means is this a cheap fix though, but it's worth it if you can spare the change. A really common complaint with the older generations of the Carbon Z T28 were about the landing gear. They'd break, they wouldn't retract, etc. And it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. We're happy to report that despite our sometimes embarrassingly harsh landings, there was never a time where the gear broke on us. Now, there's still something to be said about how the gear looks when doing grass ops. But if they aren't broken, we're not going to complain about it. Again, we are not going to complain about it. God damn it, why does it look like a highlighter? Speaking of highlighters, if you've ever wished you could stand out at the field as much as our T28 does, you'll probably be interested in our latest merch drop. Every quarter, we release new items with new designs, so if you see something you like, it's best to grab it now before we stop selling it. Link is in the description. Back to the T28, much like previous generations, the gear doors will likely break off, especially if you fly off of grass or don't know how to land an airplane like us. But to be honest, it's plastic and it's hard to think of a suitable replacement, so we'll again not fault Horizon for this. This is all just meant to be a fair warning to anyone planning on purchasing this plane. And to be honest with you, that's really most of our complaints with the bird and what you get with this plane is worth the very few problems it has. Number one, it's way cheaper than an extreme flight plane. Number two, it can hover just like an extreme flight plane. I've never been so scared in my life. Number three, you don't have to fly with your legs spread apart like this to make room for your massive balls because it's not an extreme flight plane. Jokes aside, you'll struggle to find a foamy that flies as gracefully as this one does. It's got a wide flight envelope, especially if you opt to upgrade the prop. 
It flies really slow for its size, but it also flies really fast. It excels in the acro it can do, and shoot, you can even fly it in a knife edge, and it's surprisingly predictable. Really, the only thing we couldn't get it to do was a flat spin or a good pop top. High Alpha was surprisingly stable, and while inverted, High Alpha was even more stable. And what was even more of a surprise to us was how cool it looks doing flat turns. But let's be real for a brief moment here. Most people are buying this for scale flying and not 3D, despite 3D being the target market. If you're like us, doing four points and hammerheads with the Carbon Z will take you right back to the 1960s, where T-28 pilots were flying on questionable drugs and blasting Freebird through their AirPods. Truly, there's nothing like it. It handles everything you can throw at it with ease, and even if you ask too much of the T-28, it won't bite you without a significant warning. In fact, the only configuration we could get it to enter a fully developed spin from a stall was when the plane was dirty, aka gear and flaps down, and slightly tail heavy. Even if this happens, simply let go of the sticks and the spin will stop and you can gently pull out. Speaking of, the T-28's wing cube loading comes in at 8 with a 6S5000, which is very low for a Warbird. And to some, a Warbird with a lower wing cube loading would be a turnoff. But this model is unique in that it has an unbelievable amount of space for batteries. So if you want to increase the weight to fly it a little better in the wind, or just because you hate us, now it can be usable weight. We haven't tried it ourselves, but you can supposedly get up to a 6S8000 pack in there. There's one other thing you should probably be aware of if you value your investment. It's a good idea to consider upgrading your control arms, specifically on the tail. Stock, they're cheap plastic, and after some time, that plastic can become brittle and break. And that's not a good thing with the primary flight control, especially the elevator. We went with stuff flying around the shop we had, but we'd suggest hitting up your local hobby shop for some heavier duty push rods and control arms with linkages. We were also going to complain about the plane being painted instead of having stickers with white foam, because you know, hang a rash. We are truthfully big fans of unpainted foamies with stickers for this reason. You might bang this bird in your trunk, or maybe it will get some hang a rash after you lost some money in the stock market. But we covered ours in duct tape, and we pulled off a surprisingly little amount of paint which is unusual for a painted RC plane. Horizon Paint Good Takeoffs are beginner friendly. You can just punch the power and go, or you can try a scale takeoff and only have to dance on the rudder with a quarter ounce of diligence. Landings are a breeze as well, but be prepared to leave some power in with full flaps because these things act like barn doors. And if you're still somehow finding yourself high and fast, forward slips are an option with this plane if you don't really care about stabilized approaches. Really, it's one of our favorite planes to just mindlessly do touch and goes with. It can also be fun to practice doing wheelies with the nose wheel up while dancing on the rudder. Generally speaking, we flew ours on a 5 to 6,000 milliamp 6S pack, and it did pretty great in the wind, despite having turned off AS3X after flashing our receiver that the plane came with. Crosswinds are totally doable using the deep crab method preferably, but it's probably best to just land with a headwind if the winds are strong enough and that's an option. When the winds are changing, if you land with a tailwind, you can expect a prop strike. Same with takeoffs. This is a great plane for any intermediate pilot or first beginner airplane for someone who's looking to upgrade. We opted to mechanically change the location of the pushrod on the servo to the furthest out hole and the closest in that we could get without binding on the control arms as well. After making this change, we went with 30% expo all around. This was just a personal preference. We feel the need to touch on slow flight one more time in this review, particularly a plane of this size's ability to drop the flaps and slow down to a crawl. One of the standout features of this plane is its versatility in flight, especially when utilizing its flaps. With a simple flick of a switch, you can transform the T-28 from a spirited performer into a gentle giant, allowing for smooth, controlled, and slow landings, even in smaller spaces. We didn't experiment with it, but the Smart ESC does allow for you to enable reverse thrust if you so choose. Personally, we felt like this would destroy the nose gear, so we opted against it. But with reverse thrust, I do think that there's a fair chance that this could land in the confines of my backyard. Those of you who've been around since the beginning might remember that our original T-28 review was one of the first ones we ever made, and the title to that one was The Best Plane You'll Never Get to Fly, thanks to it having been discontinued at the time. Horizon blessed us all and brought the plane back. But, to be honest, at $649, we held off on purchasing it. We were hoping a used one would pop up, but before that happened, a very generous gentleman from Texas named John hit us up and offered to send it to us for free, provided we returned it when we're done with the review. We then notified him that we'd be posting this review this week and would be available to send it back at his convenience. 
But then he called us and let us know he was donating it to us because he already grabbed another off eBay at a good discount. So if you're interested in getting one but can't afford the price tag, check out eBay. If you didn't already know, Horizon regularly posts return or slightly damaged aircraft on there at a discount. Please give a huge thanks to John in the comments below for lending and donating his T-28 to us. None of this would have been possible without him. Thanks again, John. Also, a special thanks to our channel members. As a quick channel update, congrats to Papi Sabo for winning our March photo contest on our Discord with this well-composed shot of their Mitsubishi F2 in front of a glowing sun. If you want to participate in the April contest, join our Discord and submit your favorite airplane photos taken in April there. The winner gets a free limited edition sticker and has their photo featured in both a video and in an annual Tail Heavy community calendar that is released in December. In the meantime, be sure to grab last year's calendar too. Link in the description. Now, you'll probably realize that we have a T-28 that we don't know what to do with. Go ahead and let us know down below what you'd like to see next with it. Hit the like button if you'd like to see a bush conversion, or hit subscribe if you don't care and just want to see some action with it. Happy landings, bounce one on for us, and we'll catch you next week with a new upload.